Hi, everybody. Um, this is the March 18th, 2024 Community Resources Committee meeting. Um, it will be hybrid, um, held in a hybrid format with the option for both counselors and the public to attend in person or participate remotely. The public may follow the committee's deliberations in person or by joining the virtual meeting by phone or computer. The meeting will be recorded for later broadcasts and uploaded to the Northampton Government Video Archive on YouTube. Live public comment will be available using telephone call-in or video conference technology. Um, uh, John, do you want to do the roll call, please? Yes. Uh, Councillor Rothenberg. Here. Councillor Dubs. Here. Councillor Perry. Here. Councillor Pastrich Clemmer. Here. All present. Thank you. Um, this meeting is being audio and video recorded. Um, is I don't think there's public comment because nobody is uh, tuned in today. So if there's somebody I missed, please speak up. Okay, no public comment. Any updates or announcements from any of the committee members? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Nothing, Garrett. Okay, I'll quiet. Um, minutes of the um, previous meeting. We just there. Uh, those those are available. Yeah, so I will move to approve the minutes. Okay, thank you, Gary. Uh, Councilor Perry. Um, does anybody second that? I'll second that. So Councilor Dubs, the second minute. Yep. Okay, and then um. So we have uh, a guest today. Um, I think we have to do a roll call to do a approve the minutes first. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry. Um, Councillor Dubs. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Pastrich Clemmer. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. I'm so sorry, I missed them. I will abstain. Okay. Uh, three yes, one abstention. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we can introduce Maddie. Okay. Um, so tonight, our program is Unpacking Resources, a closer look at selected programs, services targeting substance use disorder and teen homelessness, Empower and Dial Self. Um, CEO Matt O'Malley is gonna is here from Empower Health Group, um, and uh, we'll give you the floor. Thanks so much for coming today. Thank you so much. Awesome. Is, is it working? Yeah. The green, yeah. Is it working? Yeah, it's not like a microphone, microphone. It's just for the recording. All right. Um, thank you guys so much for having me. Um, I keep on saying this time and time again, Northampton has just been in particularly great um, with our endeavor and being so welcoming. And um, it's just an incredible feeling to have this much support from um, just such a great community. Uh, so thank you so much for having me. And um, what I'm doing, and I've been doing it for some time, is I've just been going around and making friends and educating people on what we're doing and being 100% transparent about it um, and hoping I get the support. And if you guys need help with, you know, um, any type of services that we provide, we're happy to help. Um, so, yes, I am the CEO um, of Empower Health Group. Um, don't really love titles. I'm also the um, janitor of Empower Health, <laughs> um, the caseworker if I need to be, um, you know, you name it, uh, you know, I'm there. And the reason why I say that is that we're not a corporate America type of organization. Um, I've built five uh, very successful treatment facilities in my past. I've been in the substance use field for 10 plus years. Um, one of them um, being a detox level of care. The reason why I'm saying this is that um, a lot of people are like, oh, a substance use treatment facility, um, red bells, right? Mm -hmm. um, the reason why I explain, you know, my programs that I've opened up in the past is to explain to you guys, I know what I'm doing. Um, this is not new to me. I'm just bringing it to an awesome area. Um, so um, I found Northampton because um, I moved to Western Massachusetts and I was looking at communities and um, my heart was driven to Northampton. Um, my wife actually cuts hair at uh, Salon 241. Mm. Um, so she was like, you got to come here. You got to come here. Uh, she's been there forever. Um, 
So I'm happy to be here. So we opened up in Power Health Group. Um, we are a day program. Uh, day program. Mm -hmm. um, BSAS requires that we call it that. Some people know it as the PHP level of care. Um, but we also um, provide night treatment as well mm -hmm. um, for people that are receiving schooling, might have a habit, um, and also want to seek a solution to their problem. We wanted to make sure that we're working to the best of our capacity to help everybody in this community. So we have day program and night program. Um, what is a day program, right? What is Empower Health Group, right? It's a place that one would go if you're suffering with um, substance use disorder or mental health, um, where we provide what is called a wraparound service. Um, that wraparound service includes um, an evaluation and a tailored treatment plan to each individual. It's not copy and paste, which means that I don't just take a group of people and you know implement the same treatment plan for all 30 of my clients, right? You come in, you do a pre-assessment, you do an evaluation and your treatment plan is contingent to you your family, your well-being, your mental health, and your sobriety. Um, so what allows us to do that is that each patient that comes in has their own therapist, their own caseworker, their own uh, psych nurse practitioner, their own medical director. Um, and we're led by um, a PhD, our clinical director, Kate Smith. Um, she's been doing this for 17 years. Um, we have master level clinicians across the board. And when you come into us, um, we do one-on-one -on -one therapy. We do group therapy. We do case management. What's case management? I like to summarize case management as life skills, right? What did the disease not allow us to take care of while it was running our lives, right? Do we not know how to budget a checkbook? Do we know how to grocery shop, right? Things that are, you know, little issues for other people could create crippling anxiety for somebody that struggles with mental health and substance use disorder, right? Which then trickles down to a relapse. So um, we provide all of these services under one place, right? What is the psych nurse practitioner? If you have somebody that comes in and they need an evaluation, they might need some medication for, um, you know, their ADHD, their bipolar, they might need to extend their MAT, which is um, um, Suboxone, Vivitrol, um, whatever the case may be. Um, we're super MAT friendly, which means that we don't discriminate on any pathway, right? If we have a client that comes in and he's on methadone, you're welcome. If you have a client that's on Vivitrol, you're welcome. We have a client that's completely abstinent that just wants to continue his recovery, you're welcome. Everybody is welcome to us no matter what the case is. Um, that's a huge reason why we chose Northampton is because the community and how welcoming they are and the belief system that's instilled here is just, you know, coexist with what we're trying to succeed um, and implement at our facility. Um, and, you know, we like to think we do a, a good a good job. We just opened up um, the beginning of last month. We just have uh, had our first batch of alumni graduate from our programs. Um, and we had 10 people that are still sober today that just got, you know, 35, 40 days clean. Um, what a tremendous feeling. Um, so, you know, we provide services that for people that suffer with substance use disorder. Um, we're licensed through BSAS. Um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with what BSAS is. Um, it's the licensing um, avenue you need to go in order to accept people that have substance use disorder. Um, and then starting the end of next month, we're going to license through the Department of Mental Health for our mental health primary. Um, so in my experience, a lot of people say, hey, we're a dual diagnosis treatment facility. I'm like, hey, that's interesting. You carry one license. That's a substance license, not a mental health license. So Empower Health Group is going to be able to hold their head high and say, hey, we're a dual diagnosis treatment facility. We carry both licenses. Um, what that would look like is that we would treat somebody that has alcoholism or addiction and suppress that first. Uh, because when you dive into mental health, the work you do in mental health is aggressive. Um, it can you know, take a lot of feelings from underneath the carpet and it can overwhelm your life. So first, let's learn how not to drink a drug. And um, you would do that for a period of about 30 to 45 days. And then we could take people downstairs into our mental health track, which is a beautiful thing, and then focus on that. Um, so we're really hitting a disease on both ends of the sword. Now, that's not to say that if somebody comes into our mental health that opens up next month, um, if you have ADHD, if you have bipolar, 
Um, if you have trauma, you don't have to have any substance in order to be in that program as well, um, which is super unique. Um, and, you know, we're just here trying, you know, like I said, you know, we're a smaller mom and pop facility. We only take about 40 clients on each floor at a time. That's because we want Joe to always be Joe, not caseload number 20 of the day. Um, it provides that level of intimacy, that level of we care, and um, it provides people an honest shot to get well. Um, for us, it's a spiritual aim, not the financial. Um, client care, um, not just stuffing a bunch of clients into one facility and hope they get well. Um, and we're starting to already reap the benefits from it. And um, it's very important to me that I engage on the community level. Um, the disease of addiction or mental health, um, it's inevitable. It's going to impact one of our lives or somebody in our lives. It's just going to happen the way the world is today. And my job is to make sure you guys know where the resources are when they do happen. Um, and we're right there on Holly Street. Um, and the question is, how would one get into Empower Health Group? Well, you call us. Um, we would do a pre-assessment. We would do an evaluation. We would determine by our clinical director if it's an appropriate level of care for you. Um, if you're in our program, that's because it's been approved by our clinical director, and sometimes we have to refer you to a higher level of care. Then you can come to us after. But it's always doing eth things ethically, morally, um, and that is in best interest of the people trying to receive treatment with us. Um, and yeah, we... Uh, we're here and we're happy to be here. And, you know, I'm kind of, you know, making my rounds in Northampton and, you know, um, uh, not just educating, um, but opening up the floor to ask if there's something you guys would like to see us do or do better. Um, we love constru constructive criticism. We want to be a true community resource. That means listening to our community and their needs. Um, so, um, I think, you know, I more or less covered a lot. Um, we thrive off the transparency. Um, I am from Boston. I could talk it to them blue in the face. Um, I'm pretty good at it. Um, but come by, you know, um, see what the energy is like at the facility, right? Come take a tour. Um, I would be happy and honored to show anybody who might be interested in our services. Um yeah um is there anybody who might have some questions anybody have questions out there um the place is beautiful too i did go by and and it's stunning <laughs> uh quaverly thank you hi hey maddie good to see you again hey my friend good to see you hey so i have two questions first have you been able to hook up with the dcc yet and if not i think they're coming here in a little while at another meeting but second as you've been getting familiar with the resources that we have in Northampton, are you starting to get a sense of what gaps Empower particularly fills as a niche that's maybe kind of unique? Or are you still kind of getting your bearings around what's already here? I am, I believe I'm too new in town to really indicate what those gaps are. Um, I am finding that there is definitely a need for these services in particularly. Um, so right now, I think I'm just trying to stay in my lane and provide those services at um, a quality level and then, you know, work with the community and maybe what, and, and try to adjust to what those gaps will, would be. Um, again, I, I, I just think I'm a little too new to say, hey, I think this is what we need to do better. This is what we need to do better. I'm just trying to do my part yeah. and um, do it great. And, you know, like I said, um, you guys tell me what the gaps might be. How could I help, right? Um, I was thinking, Maddie, I don't know. I'm not super familiar with everything here either, but I feel like as I've learned more about your group, there's a lot of uh, like discretion. This is the kind of thing like, any person, any walk of life. Um, this is this is looking at like your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your coworker. Like this is this is for everybody in Northampton. Is the sense that I get. Sure. Yeah. It's it's for everybody in Northampton and surrounding Northampton, right? Um, and I guess you could say one of the things that I have indicated is that it's difficult for people to get 
treatment in a timely fashion. I, I think that's what I've ran into is that, you know, all the beds are full. There's no place for everybody to go. There's a waiting list, right? Um, in West, I think that's in Western Mass as a whole, not just in Northampton. Um, now, I bring certain systems and protocols that I've implemented in the Boston area um, that allow me to get these beds regularly, that allow me to place people in a timely fashion. And I'm hoping that I could bring that to the community. And when people do ask for help, make sure that they could get it. Um, it's a tall order. It's a lot of stress. It's a lot of anxiety, but it's well worth it. Um, so I guess that's really, you know, the only thing that I could pinpoint on right now. And are you going to keep doing, and you, you use the term beds, but it's, it's all outpatient, right? That's just sort of a term of art. So, yeah, we are an outpatient level of care. Um, so which what I mean by beds is before you come to me, right? Um, you know what I mean? How could I bridge that gap, right? Because a lot of times, more than often, when people come to the outpatient level of clear, uh, care, you complete detox or residential first, right? Um, and we have a whole entire admissions department that is designated just to place in people into that level of care, right? Our whole rule of thumb is you might not be calling us for our services. You might be just calling for help. My team is required to get you help. So um, I think, you know, just supplying these resources to Western Mass as a whole and Northampton in particular, and um, getting people that help is going to, in retrospect, help people get into the facility as well. Yeah, and let us know when you're having events that are for family and things like that as well. I know you have some great guest speakers from time to time. And if you want to do any events to kind of, you know, launch something in Ward 3, just give me a call anytime. I would love that. I'm, I am I actually, I was just on a, you were there. I was on a meeting the other day and I think it was the Ward 3 meeting. And, you know, there was a gentleman in the school that asked if I, we do schools. Mm -hmm. Um, I do public, I've public, I did public speaking for eight years mm -hmm. for the state of Massachusetts. So, um, I love putting together events, but first I wanted to, um, let my face be known a little bit before I'm like, Hey, let's do a recovery speaker <laughs> event in, you know, a town that I'm new in. Um, but you know, anything that we could sponsor, anything that we could be a part of anything that we could, you know, um, use our voices and more or less break the stigma and educate and, supply that you know um easiness and you know calmness to like people look at the the disease of addiction like it's crazy but they don't see that it, it's the most beautiful thing once you start it right and um help people understand that and how to achieve it um so um thank you craven quavely has been great she's been plugging me in yeah she's the one that awesome. introduced us yeah um we have a question from a community member. That's that's okay, right? I think I think this is your committee. So okay, I wasn't sure if yeah. the same rules applied yeah. to. Uh, it's a little. We are a little more lax. Okay, <laughs> I just didn't want to, you know, break the rules. Um, hi, Nick. Uh, thanks for coming today. Um, I told you about Nick when I came to see you, and he's a. Um, you can. You can I think we have to unmute him. him a yeah. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I understand it's this is a little bit of a, 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 an exception, but Deb asked me to uh uh to attend and uh awesome. uh and I, I'm very interested in any any new services in town. Uh I I've been uh if uh affiliated with, with several agencies over a number of years, but most recently with uh, clinical and support options. Um, uh, you're, and I, I'm sorry, it took me a few minutes to get the Zoom going. I couldn't, so I missed the beginning. But could you, how do people pay for your services? And let me start off with that question. Can you, and, and what's your name again? My name is Maddie. Maddie, uh, Nick Fleischer. Um, how do people pay uh, for uh, uh, for the various services? That's a great question. Um, so we are contracted with almost every major insurance provider, um, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Cigna, United Healthcare, 
Um, you name it, we are contracted with it. Now we are going to begin trying to do some in not in network contracting. Now, granted that we're brand new, that takes some time. Um, but how do you pay for it is that your provider would take care of your, you know, your treatment. Um, now we do have cash pay options, um, and we're working on getting, um, in contract with mass health. Right. And here's the famous question, right? Why don't you take mass health? Right. And then this is, I actually love this question because it allows me to, you know, I get a space to like educate people on what it looks like to get a contract with mass health. Right. Um, so it's on our radar, but the process is, is first and foremost, you need to get audited when you're new. When you get audited, they need to say that, you know, all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted and you're good, right? That takes a significant amount of time while you're waiting for the audit. Then once you pass the audit, they would come in and they would give you an ID. You take that ID, then you submit to MassHealth, and then you get access to the portal. And then once you get access to the portal, you have to negotiate your rates with MassHealth. And it's a long process, but well worth it. Um, yeah. And it's something that we are actively pursuing um, and we're trying to do it as fast as possible. Um, if I could snap my fingers and be like, hey, we're mass health ready right now, I would. Um, but my rule of thumb is uh, when it comes to stuff like that, um, look, I'm in long term recovery myself. This isn't just like a business for me. Um, I had a mother that suffered with addiction and mental health and I lost my mother to the disease of addiction when I was 14 years old. I then struggled for a decade myself and I got clean and I got educated and I found out that I have a huge passion for helping people, right? So my rule of thumb is I don't care what you have for insurance or whatever the case might be. If you have a spark to be get sober and get well, um, it's going to be really difficult for me to be like, hey, you know, look, you don't have the right insurance. I can't take you. Um, you know, it's just not how I operate, right? So as long as somebody wants to get well, man, you give me a call. I give out scholarships like it's candy on, you know, the hell on Halloween. It's it's just what I do, right? I'm here to help the community, not take, you know, it's not all finances for me. It's 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 truly about helping people get well. Um and my experience, too, is, you know, people that are scholarship, they're usually the best in the community. Um, they're usually the best in treatment, right? Uh, they want it. Um, now, if we have somebody that's just, you know, trying to make his PO happy and then plans on going out and using as soon as they complete treatment, um, we'll kind of get a feel for that. Um, and be like, you know, probably not the best. We'll help you go someplace that's appropriate for you. Mm -hmm. Um, but right now it's, um, you know, so we're contracted with every major insurance. We're giving out scholarships. Um, cash pay is an option. Um, so that's, you know, kind of how we're operating right now until we're about 16 months down the road where we could take um, and contract mass health. And then even when we contract with mass health, um, you got to have a big operation, right? You better have a big operation when you contract with mass health because the place is going to fill itself. Um, so when we do that, we're probably going to get a second location within the community um, and treat mass health as its own project as well. It, it, is it the same for Medicare as mass health? Medicare is separate, right? So Medicare means that you have some medical underlining issues, right? Um, which there are places that accept Medicare, right? Like ad care and other organizations that we have great relationships with. So that's what I mean. Like, um, you know, I have a business development background. I'm also certified interventionist. I'm also a recovery coach. I have some, you know, cool uh, letters behind my name. I've been doing this for a long time. So that's why it's like when people call and ask for help, your insurance is not going to be a barrier. We're going to get you help. Well, I want to, I just want to uh, uh, validate that um, uh, all of the local agencies uh, are, are uh, packed full. I mean, there's it just, you know, ServiceNet, CSO, uh, CHD, BHN, all of them are, uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's very, it's very complicated. It's a really complicated business. I'm, I'm aware of this and, but there's waiting lists 
just about everywhere. And yeah. um, uh, although um, although there are there are some fast tracks at various places, and and you you probably should get to know some of the possibilities because there are there are some places you can get into the same day, but but generally for outpatient therapy takes takes a while. It's really it's really frustrating. One hundred percent, and that's like like I stated before. That's something that I evaluated very early on i was like wow it, you you know not just for outpatient to get you know into a detox or into a residential the waiting list are, are substantial right and then some of the waiting lists for a private therapist are a year long uh right. you know out this way um uh, and that's where i'm guessing i'm hoping to bridge the gap right because um just because there's a waiting list. Massachusetts is a big state. And, you know, we talked about this, me and Quaverly talked about this. It's like people kind of forget that Western Massachusetts is a part of Massachusetts. Right. Um, <laughs> and we didn't, you know, um, somebody that plugged me in with Quaverly, um, he worked for the state for a long time and he has a big place in his heart for Western Massachusetts. It's rich. Um, and that's why we picked this part of the state it's because it needs it so desperately. Right. Um, which leads into my next point, just because there's not beds available here does not mean they're not available in Massachusetts. Um, and as long as you have a Massachusetts ID, um, you qualify for those beds as well, right? So that's where I'm able to shake and move and you'd be like, hey, you know, look, I have a, a detox that's willing to take you in Worcester. You know what I mean? Um, I have a detox that's willing to take you in, you know, um, the North Shore, right? And not only that, right, I do my due diligence. There are grants and funds like um, that, you know, not only is there a detox that's willing to take you, um, there's transportation that's willing to get you. Um, you know, I do my research. So like, I'm hoping that I could bring those resources into Western Massachusetts and make them regularly available because Western Massachusetts is a part of Massachusetts. Um, and people qualify for the same services that people from Boston, Worcester, Metro West, Middlesex, and the North Shore qualify for as well. It's just, unfortunately, a lot of people don't know who to call. Um, a lot of my friends work there, right? I got clean with a lot of them. A lot of them might work in admissions. And then also the gap that I could bridge as well is the admissions process is just a nightmare, right? Um, what usually happens is you call a 1-800 number for like Spectrum or like this or that. And, you know, they'll pick up the phone and they'll say, hey, call back at nine o'clock in the morning. I think we'll have a bed ready for you, right? Um, I'm not doing, I, you know, I, you know, not ego, but like, I know the guy that probably runs that department. So I'm going to say, hey, I have somebody trying to get in. Can you call him? And they will. And we've been successful uh, with it, you know, thus far. Just the other day, I had a gentleman from um, this area that needed detox. There was nothing around here. Um, so I got him into Spectrum in Westboro. Um, and we got him there, you know, and we made this happen within an hour. Um that's what I'm hoping to do. And then, you know, if you want to come to empower, great, but I'm just really just trying to help people. Thank you. One last question. Are, are you, um, uh, I don't know the, uh, the category, are you a nonprofit, uh, organization? No. So we are for profit, um, which means that empower health group is completely funded by myself and my team. Um, so, um, you know, we're putting it up on the front end just to make sure that people are getting the services that they deserve. Um, and there is, to double back on that, we have a business plan, right? Um, anybody with a moral compass that wants to do this the right way, your for-profit organization should fund your mass health organization, right? A lot of places have trouble um, staffing and keeping employees and providing a high level of care because it's just not built the right way, right? If you do it this way, I could afford to keep employees the high level of care and um, quality services for anybody that might want to come to Empower Health Group. So that's what we're going for. That's our business plan. Um, and we're excited to be here. Great. Thank you. Nick, before you go, can I just say to both you and Deb, 
what a fabulous idea for you to be here and how perfect it is when we have one expert here to have another expert to be in dialogue for us to learn from. That was just knocking it out of the park, both of you. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Nick, for reaching out um, months ago. Yeah. Well, well, have yeah, you I, don't, you know, I don't know uh, Quaverly, but I, I mean, this is this is what I've been doing for the last 30 years in in Northampton and 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 uh, Hampshire and Franklin County. So I I, I was uh, uh, I oversaw the uh, crisis uh, intervention program and, and I'm a, and a huge supporter of the DCC. Uh, I, I helped help to uh, propose that that uh, getting started. So, um, so this is something I'm very interested in. Is, D uh, is DCC coming to give us a report soon? Um, that's going to come up later. I'm going to talk to you all about it. Nick, you sound like the guy I should probably know. <laughs> um, I would love it if, you know, you came by the facility. Again, I could talk it to him blue in the face, really good at it. Um, but I would love to show you um, the facility and our departments and our clinical care. Um, if you uh -huh. want to maybe grab my information from Deb after and um, if, if if I can drop by this week, I I will on Thursday. I'm leaving for two weeks, uh, but I'll I'll see if I can uh, catch you at some point. Please tell me you're going somewhere hot, uh, Arizona. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Have fun. We'll be at the facility. Drop in. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks for coming, Nick. Um, okay. Anybody have questions? Garrick. Yes. Yeah. Councilor Perry. Uh, Again, thank you, Maddie, for coming. It's thank great. You. We met months ago. It was, yeah. Uh, and and we, you know, we talked about kind of having you come and, and present. And so I'm so thankful that you uh, took the time out. And I would love uh, your presentation. A lot of the questions that I had written down have already been asked, but um, I have a couple. And one is, how how big of a staff are you guys working with now? Um, I know that you said you have uh, a facility in the Boston area. Or had, had one or... So my partner, um, which is Maddie, um, Maddie Powers, um, Maddie and Maddie, he's just an incredible human being. Um, so we have um, Power Recovery. It's actually in Rivea. Um, now Empower is designated to the western part of the state. Um, Maddie's pretty cool. He's on like, he does a lot of his advertising on like Kiss 108 and, and things like that. So you can't miss him. Um He's actually bald, just like me. So if you're like, <laughs> kind of, is that him? <laughs> okay. Um, great individual. Um, but to answer your question, we have 12 staff um, as of right now, um, a lot of them being clinicians, um, because that's, you know, where it, you know, your funds should go. Yeah. Um, and we'll bring on obviously more staff when the mental health is ready to launch as well. Um, 12 staff is, you know, um, a pretty big operation. Um, now, um, I have 12 staff for the reasons that I said, um, I don't want clients getting lost in the sauce per se. Right. I want them to always get the quality care. Um, so if that means I got to pay more to employ more people, um, to have a smaller caseload, to provide stronger clinical services, that's what we're going to do. Um, so right now it's 12. Well, we should be growing fairly quickly. So, um, yeah. That's awesome. Um, my wife is also a uh, clinician. So, awesome. Uh, who used to work at CSO, but then started private practice downtown. And I will also attest to the fact that these services are needed. Uh, and there's a tremendous waiting list. Thank you for coming to, to the area. Um, my other question was, are there any thoughts of having um, the ability for alumni uh, people who've gone through the program to come back and work or do you do you guys do that i already have uh i love doing that um fun fact about me is um how i got in the field um is i actually went through a program and then the guy who scholarship me through the program um was like you know put me in housing you know gave me a case management job and then moved me up so it's something i believe in so yeah you know we are definitely going to be bringing alumni on as staff right 
Um, but also we have an alumni department, right? Um, alumni events once a month, right? Um, on the weekends, maybe we're going bowling or whatever the case may be. We're trying to build our own community inside our community, um, a safe place for people um, that struggle, that, you know, get it. Uh, so really big on alumni. Um, and as we continue to graduate more people, um, the alumni events will get larger and, you know, we'll do funner things and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we'll, we're really big on that. Um, all kinds of alumni, there's just so much alumni stuff that we do. Alumni tracking, alumni follow-ups, alumni emails, alumni letter, uh, news, you know, emails blasted out. Um, that Brian, which is our director of alumni, um, it's just texting these guys all day, every day. He's picking them up. They're going to meetings. Um, it's it's really great to watch. Thank you. Um, and then I think the the other thing I just want to say, I, I know that you've you have asked us to give you anything that we could do to help. And I, I will also, as Quaverly did, um offer my services. I love my, you know, my my background is throwing events, creating community, building that. So I love to help. Um, but I'm wondering if if there are things that you think would make your job easier that we can do as a city uh services or, or ways to do that and you don't have to answer but but i'd love to hear what you think we could do a little better thank you for that um right now you guys have been great you guys have you guys have been great i've gotten so much support it's actually kind of blows my mind it's not like that in the boston area everybody for some reason is in competition with themselves um and others it's weird um but as of right now just um em embrace us right help us with our mission right we want to create a safe place in a community um where people know where to go and you guys have been great for that and I would love to, you know, I love um, doing events, right? In the Boston area, it's the recovery community is super, super strong. They do like um, all kinds of speaker jams and like all kinds of recovery events. And that's something I would love to do in this area. But again, I wanted to like get my toes wet <laughs> yeah. before I was like let's do our recovery speaker jam and advertising and stuff like that. But if that's something you guys are willing to um, work, you know, with me on um, a space to do it at, um, you know, would be great. And also uh, if there's any great nonprofits in the Northampton area, um, that's usually how we do it is we would use the nonprofit to raise the money. Um, and we would have all kinds of awesome speakers come out um and you know just say hey look recovery is fun you know listen to these stories and a lot of people in recovery come and then also people that are not in recovery are like wow what a great person right and you know what a turnaround right like um you wouldn't be able to tell that i was a heroin addict for 12 years you know what i mean um, because of how I present myself, because of how the recovery community, I didn't learn this on my own. Recovery community taught it, those events. And so I'm looking to bring that to this area. But again, I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to ease into that. Um, but yeah, that's definitely something I would love to do. And I know I said I had no more questions, but I'm just wondering um, how how far people have have. Uh, reached out to you from uh, have people reached out from Holyoke and other communities or what what has been um kind of kind of the I don't know if there's any typical journey but uh yeah um so with empower with empower or, yeah um yeah um whole, um all over Western Mass to be blunt and honest um you know Ludlow um I you know Greenfield Pittsfield um you know Connecticut um, you know, um, our whole thing is, is like, you know, you know, we just want to help. And I hate to, I don't want to sound egotistical, but I have a great reputation. I've been doing this for a long time. So people know if I'm building a program, it's going to be clinically strong and client centered. So 
I could go open up a, you know, a program in France and they'd be like, I, you know, why don't you call Maddie, you know, because the, they're going to do the right thing. Um, but also Northampton too. Um, I have quite a few people from Northampton, um, which is super awesome. And I'm hoping to get more. Um, again, a lot of people still don't know we're there. So, um, I don't know if there's like a town day or like, um, I love, you know, events where I could put up a table. Uh, I'm going to do the chamber of, um, Calm, um, what is it? Uh, the chamber. Yeah, the um, arrive at five. They do the thing there. Yeah, I was suggested to do that. There's another one with um, the businesses. You know, another separate one. Um, the Pride March is coming up in May, so there's a tabling area at I the end of it. Love to hold the table there. Mm -hmm. um, all that stuff, like anything to say, hey, we're here. We're friends. We're allies. Like, if you need us, you know. We're here. I want to, you know, figure out how to contact uh, contract with Smith College. Mm -hmm. I know we're right around the corner from contracted with Amherst College for the students there. Um, we're trying to hit it on all angles, you know. And another thing that we do is like, as long as you're like forty five minutes from the facility, we provide transportation too. Oh, so you know, even though you might be from, you know, let's say Ludlow or. That's where I that's where I live. My wife's Portuguese. If you are wondering why I'm in Ludlow, um, so, <laughs> yes. Um, but um, I'm trying to figure out how to um, ease in my way into. I know there's a drug court here. Um, I want to be a service for the drug court and just a service, right? It, they don't even have to, you know, have the qualified insurance as long as they want to be in programming. Mm -hmm. um, those are things that I want to do here. I want to be the go-to for Northampton for this issue. Um, see how it goes. You're welcome. And uh, Jerem, uh, Council Dubs, any questions or? At the moment, no. But uh, thank you so <laughs> much for for speaking. Um, it's amazing, and I'm hoping to visit the facility soon and get and get to know get to know it better. Thank you. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Anybody who hasn't seen it, it's a beautiful space. So definitely check it out. Yeah. And do you, are you going to put a sign up outside? Because I think I'm not. Um, and um, there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. It's like um, I want to privacy people's uh, privacy, mm -hmm. right? Um, my job is to make your experience comfortable mm -hmm. and less anxiety driven as it already is. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't want a sign out front that says, yeah, this is where drug addicts, yeah. <laughs> alcoholics and people with mental health. Right. Out, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's a reason why it's just a subtle brick building. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't even know it's a treatment facility. Yeah, not at all. We're a patient there. Mm -hmm. um, I take pride in that. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, we have a website, feel free to check it out. Um, and. Again, I just want to be on the community level as aggressively as I can, really. Um, is there a minimum age? Um, so we're eight. We're not adolescent, mm -hmm. um, which would mean that we're eighteen plus. Okay. Um, however, when we get the mental health license, because a state, uh, because of laws and regulations, as long as we have the mental health license and we have a separate track, we could do adolescent mm -hmm. as long as we have the right clinicians mm -hmm. um so we're thinking about maybe doing um once a week nighttime track for that mm -hmm. i know that's something that's up in the air mm -hmm. i actually got a couple inquiries um mm -hmm. through you know the website about adolescent in this mm -hmm. area um so it seems to be something that i might be able to help with so we're going to try to pursue it that'd be great yeah um and you said there's a alumni graduation how long is the program it's a great question. I missed that one. <laughs> uh, so um, the program, um, if you do the full continuum of care, um, they can run from 90 to 120 days. Oh. Yes. Um, that's granted if you do PHP, IOP5, IOP3, mm -hmm. then OP. Um, a lot of places will discharge you from the program when you get to that outpatient level, which essentially means you meet with your therapist once or twice a month 
we're not going to do that. Um, how I operate is as long as you're safe here and you're in your recovery, you have access to your therapist. Mm -hmm. um, and if the therapist doesn't want to do that, they should probably look for a different place to work because that's how I operate. Um, I had people at my program before. They would just come and hang out. You know, they weren't even, you know, they had zero authorizations at that point. Like there was no more units or billable days. And it was month. They just came because it was someplace safe for them. Mm -hmm. And that's important to me. Yeah. Yes. And um, yeah, I have 40 years in medicine. So if you need any of that, if I can do anything, okay, let me know. I will. Interventional radiology and. Finding purpose in this area is impotent. Yeah. I it's, misread I it because I looked at like Indeed. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, I'm going to get the best therapist mm -hmm. around. And then I start there. They all have their private practices mm -hmm. or, you know, and I was just like. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's, tricky. Yeah. I it really... <laughs> it's really oh. hard. I can't believe how hard it is for people. But we have some great ones. We have yeah. Jim. We have Gina. Jim's 77 years old. Oh. And he's been doing this longer than he's like a Jedi. Been alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Well, thanks. I mean, I, I really give you a lot of credit. You know, I know how hard it is to come clean and um, especially from something like heroin. And I'm sure, you know, and sounds like you didn't have much support growing up. So, and I'm sure your life could have taken a very different turn, but, you know, yeah. you're obviously a very strong person and a giving person. And, you know, just thank you so much for paying it forward in our neighborhood here. Appreciate it. Really a, a great asset to Northampton and our and Western Mass. I I thank you guys. And mm -hmm. thank you so much for coming out today and spending time here. Day, Maddie. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, I just had a newborn. So mm. uh, the highlight of my St. Patrick's Day was putting on our this is my first St. Patrick's Day outfit. Uh, um, cute. Oh my God! Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, you met her. Your wife was pregnant. Yeah, when you came in the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow, mm -hmm. that was tense. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for having me. And again, I would love to. You know, I think a lot of you guys said, you know, let's do some events together. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Councilor Perry is your your guy for events. So please, dude, I love that stuff. I love that, and we'll fund it too. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, well. Through the non, like what I do is I, you know, we create a flyer, we'll do a sponsorship package, and then I know a million different organizations that just want to get their name out there and be there for the cause. Um, I'm very successful at it. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much. And I'm going to let you guys do all of the important stuff that you guys yeah, do. This was one of the important things. So <laughs> thank you so much. And here, guys, there's, um, okay. I'll pass this up for you. Thank Just you. pass it down. Um, there's some information. Um, here's my cards too. Um, and family, friends, people that you think might you know um, need the service. Um, and then if you want to start, if you want to start planning some stuff, my um, that's you know I made a huge mistake in my what numbers on the website and the Google and the pamphlet information so um, my wife might go a little crazy sometimes but it's worth every second so <laughs> any one of those numbers okay. there's little numbers on the government website too mm -hmm. made that mistake yes yeah, same here <laughs> we're gonna do it differently next time um so yes thank you um not so great team it was a pleasure i was so excited when i saw you when i walked in oh. <laughs> I knew I was going to run into him sooner or later. And a pretty Great. cool group of counselors here. So. Oh, my God, incredible. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank, thank you. So thank you. Pleasure Hi, to meet you. Yeah, and tell Richie, Richard, was sorry he couldn't make it tonight. No. But he's here in spirit, so. We have four guys. I know. It's, yeah. I don't know how he does it. Waverly, thank you so much. You're the best. Bye-bye. <laughs> Say hi to your uh, wife. She'll know I me know. from the salon. You know her. <laughs> you know her. She knows me. It's Ariana. Yes, yeah. yeah, she'll know me. Tell her Quaverly says hi. Okay, I will. I have one right here. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Do you want to read the first page? I'll read the second page. Yeah, perfect.
So um, our next guest, um, Dial Self, they were not able to be here in person, but they did send something for us to read, and um, Garrick and I could read it. So um, it's called Dial Self Youth and Community, and um, Youth and Community Services, and it's an independent, community-based nonprofit agency that works with young people between the ages of 11 and 24 in Franklin and Hampshire County to help them increase their personal and community strengths and develop autonomy by connecting them with basic housing, need, uh, basic needs, housing, income, education, and civic opportunities. All of our services and programs are voluntary and focused around the young person's needs and goals. The services that we offer are, but may not be limited to, outreach services. Our staff conduct direct street outreach focused main, mostly in Greenfield, Turner's Falls, Orange, Athol, Northampton, and Amherst. They can also meet with help any youth in Franklin or Hampshire County. They walk in the streets, checking the parks and visiting other service agencies. The outreach team provides snacks, clothing, harm reduction supplies, safer sex supplies, hygiene products, bus passes, survival gear when needed and other basic needs supplies. The outreach team also provides information about other dial self services as well as other agencies, such as local shelters, community meals, DTA, crisis services, et cetera. They can help youth navigate these agencies as well as our own and the paperwork requirements if needed. Our outreach team is in Hampshire County on Thursdays at, at the Mana Community Center, Northampton from 12 to three and out on the streets and in the parks from three to 5.30 PM. They can also be contacted to meet young people by appointment if needed at 413-774-7054, extension 7. Drop-in resource centers. Um, Dial Self has two drop-in resource centers, one in Greenfield at 277 Main Street, third floor, open Mondays and Wednesdays from 2 to 7, and one in Orange, 131 West Main Street, second floor, OIC, accessible by appointment. 413-774-7054, extension 4. Young people can stop in and talk about their individual situation, and staff will work with them to figure out how the agency can best support them. Young people can also access staff by calling 413-775-7054, um, extension 4. In these resource centers, people... Oh, do you want to just do that part? Yeah. Oh, in these... And then the top. Perfect. In these, res in these resource centers, young people can also access bus passes, food pantry, hygiene products, clothing, safer sex supplies, harm reduction supplies, get connected with street outreach supports and general support around a variety of needs and goals identified by the young person. They also have dedicated house housing case management where young people can receive case management services dedicated to finding housing or stabilizing their current housing depending on their needs. To talk and learn more about the housing and case management options that Dial Self has to offer the young person should call 413-774-7054, extension 4, and speak with a Dial Self staff member. They also offer housing options. Most housing options require some level of case management. For emergency and short-term housing, depending on the young person's age and situation, options may include staying up to a couple of weeks at a Dial Self location called the Night Owl, working with a friend or family member, connecting them with a partner agency that offers options around housings, and if funds are available, the possibility of a one-time housing subsidy. If their current housing is at risk, staff can look at possible options to help stabilize the situation so it can be a safe and secure place for them without having to move out. For long-term housing, which is defined as six months or more, Dial Self has multiple properties that have a rental, have rental subsidies attached and works with property owners in the community to house young people ages 18 to 24 as tenants. These programs offer varying levels of support and programming depending on the young person's individual needs. Depending on a young person's individual circumstances and situations, Dial Self may be able to help a young person with initial move-in costs and help to subsidize the rent while the young person works to obtain the income needed to support their housing themselves. And again, for any questions, contact them at 413-774-7054 at extension 4. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, that would be super. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so that's um, it for our um, speaker portion tonight. Um, and there's no items. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. That's it for our um, speakers tonight. And um, thanks again to Matt um, from Empower and from Dial Self to sending um, the statement with them. And um, there's no items referred to committee. Um, does anybody have new business? Um, I do. Okay. Um, so um, I spoke with Councillor uh, Moulton, and um, we, since we were trying to have DCC here, and he also would like to have an update from them, we talked about doing a joint meeting sometime in April. Um, our April meeting falls on Patriots Day, so there's no meeting that day. Um, and since uh, Councillor Rothenberg and Councillor Perry, I mean, Councillor Dubs are both on city services, um, you don't need to hear it twice. So <laughs> it kind of makes sense just to join up and uh, and have both groups hosting DCC. Does that sound good for everybody? I love that idea. Sounds um, good. Yeah, so we just need to figure out a time, um, a day and time um, that we can do that. And um, in, uh, in April, so... Um, I mean, is there any chunks of time that people are going to be away or that we could just, or be all kind of flexible? I don't have access to my full calendar right now. The so last I can't... week of April is hard for me. Starting on like the 23rd and forward. Okay. It would be hard. Okay. And Councilor Dubs, any chunks that... Uh, it should be good for April. I, I don't think I don't have anything, any plan to go anywhere. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Would it be possible to do it during the regularly scheduled city service time, or um, there's just the first week, the first it would be the first Monday. So I don't know. That might be a little tight. Oh yeah. So um, it's March. so maybe uh, I think we'll we'll talk to um actually talk to DCC first and see when they're available to send somebody, and then we could work it out okay. from there. Um, it would probably be, you know, 4.30, 5.30 kind of thing All right. for us. Okay, perfect. That's great. That'll be a really great meeting. Um, and uh, thanks. Okay, so if there's no other new business and we can, if I'll someone wants to file a uh, Make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Councillor Perry, Councillor Doe. Uh, Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Patrick Clemmer. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. Councillor Dubs. Yes. All right. Adjourn at 630. That was great, guys. Thanks, everybody.